On occasion, I have to use a trombone wire to hold my music. I got this one many years ago in high school marching band. Still have it. But if you're going to be outside and you can't use a full stand, you may need to use one of these liars. Now on my uh, large bore instrument, the mouthpiece receiver is such that that liar actually fits on there right out of the box, no problems. But on my straight tenor, you can see that this mouthpiece receiver is just too large and it has a threaded lead pipe on there and there's just no standard liar that's going to fit on that, on that uh, mouthpiece receiver. There are some alternatives. You could try and put it around the mouthpiece, but that's really too narrow. Another alternative is to buy one of these flip books that clamps directly on the bell, and they're pretty, they're secure. I tried one, but if I can get the right angle, and actually you can already see it here, I think, it creased my bell there, and that's just through use over time, or, you know, you have that clamped on there and it's like a lever. You put a little leverage on there and it bends the bell and that's really not a great alternative either to have your your bell be increased. So I set out to find some inexpensive parts at a hardware store to make an adapter that would fit onto the slide brace so that I could use my old wire on this horn. So if you stick with me I'm going to show you how I accomplished that. Okay, I'm going to show you the parts that I picked up at the hardware store and then try and give you an idea of how I put this uh, trombone liar adapter together. The key component is this grounding pipe clamp. You can find this at the hardware store in the plumbing section, sometimes maybe it would be in the electrical section. As you loosen these two screws on the side, the clamp opens. It'll actually, at this particular model, will actually even come apart. And normally you would clamp this down onto a water pipe. You tighten these screws so it clamps tight. And then you'd use this tap screw up here to attach a ground wire. Um, what we're actually going to do is attach it to the tubing of the slide brace. And then on the tap screw, we're going to put a section of copper tubing uh, that will allow the, uh, the liar to attach to the copper tubing, essentially work as an adapter. So that's, one, that's the main part. Other things you're going to need are a two-foot section of half-inch copper pipe. So they sell them at Home Depot in two-foot sections and they're half-inch diameter. And that's perfect diameter for the wire to fit on there and tighten. You'll need some quarter-inch lock washers. That's so when we attach the copper tubing to the pipe clamp, uh, the copper dust tubing doesn't spin. And you'll want to get some furniture felt of some type. This is, it's literally just, you know, it's almost like a cardboard with felt attached and then it's got this tape on the back, you pull it off and it's sticky. So the finished product is going to look like this. You can see our basic clamp. I've got the felt pads now stuck onto the teeth of the clamp. So when I attach it to the slide brace, it doesn't damage the lacquer on the horn. I've got my one inch, I've got a one inch segment of this half inch copper tubing, so it's one inch long, and in the center, at a half inch, I've drilled a five sixteenth inch hole, five sixteenth inch hole. Once I have that hole, I can take the tap screw off of the clamp, I can put it through, put a lock washer on it, and put it through the copper tubing, and attach it back to the top of the clamp and tighten it down through this hole. When I tightened it, I had a screwdriver that you can see is fairly narrow that allowed me to get that screwdriver in there and turn it to tighten that screw down onto the clamp so that the copper tubing is firmly attached to the clamp itself. A couple little hints. You're going to have to measure you're going to have to measure the, uh, the segment of copper tubing. Just measure it at one inch where you're going to cut it for the proper length and then go in the middle at a half inch and that's where you're going to drill your hole. I would recommend that you drill the hole 
at the half inch mark first so that you have the rest of the tubing to hold on to to get some grip on or clamp so that you can, can it's more easy to drill rather than having this little segment. You might want to even use a nail or to indent that a little bit to get started and maybe start with smaller drill bits and work your way up to the 5 16th inch size um, just so that you can essentially make larger and larger pilot holes until at some point you use the 5 16th inch drill bit for that last hole and you're going to go all the way through both sides of the of the tubing so you'll end up with that half it, with that inch long segment of copper tubing with a 5 16th inch hole drilled in the center to attach it to the clamp So what I'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and show you in the next uh, segment here the finished product attached to the slide brace here of the, of the trombone. So I'm going to loosen this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, loosen the screws on here and just clamp it right on to the slide base of the, of the trombone. So here's the finished product on the trombone. I attached the clamp to the slide brace. And then on top of the clamp is attached the segment of copper tubing, which essentially works as the adapter to attach the lighter. You can see a small piece of furniture felt between the clamp and the horn just to protect the lac lacquer. Now, if you don't tighten this up too much um, at first, you can rotate this clamp and you can also rotate the lyre on the copper tubing to get the right height and angle that you like um, for your music. So once it's attached and uh, tightened down, it's very sturdy, it's easy to hold the brace, and the slide is free. It doesn't impede the slide at all. So if you had that problem, uh, hopefully you found this video helpful, and thanks for checking it out.